This is the final video of a three-part series reviewing and ranking every Destiny 2 exotic weapon into a tier list for PvP. The previous videos covered all of the weapons that require primary and special ammo, and you can find links to each of those in the description. This video will cover all of the weapons that require heavy ammo. Before we get into the rankings, let's quickly discuss the ground rules for how I decided where to place each weapon. First off, these rankings are from the point of view of a PC player using mouse and keyboard as my primary input device. I'll try to make notes where using a controller may influence the decision otherwise, but the final ranking for this list will be considering mouse and keyboard use. Second, these rankings are specifically looking at how useful these weapons are in PvP. Some of these are excellent PvE weapons, but that's not what we're evaluating today. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the tier list. By the way, the background footage from this video is mostly captured during my live streams over on Twitch. You can watch me live over at twitch.tv slash pattycakespc. I'm going to list these weapons in the order that they show up in the collections in-game. So our first weapon to cover is the Prospector. The Prospector's main exotic perk is Excavation. Fire Grenades, released to detonate all live grenades simultaneously. Grenades stick to surfaces and set targets on fire. It also has full auto trigger system. Holding down the trigger will fire this weapon at full auto. Out of all the exotic heavy weapons I tested for this video, I think the Prospector may have felt the most out of place in PvP, along with another grenade launcher later on in the list. If you're able to land a direct hit, it does give you a one-hit kill. It deals 182 splash damage, plus 10 from the direct hit and another burn component. The projectiles are not hitscan though, so you'll need to time your shot perfectly against the moving target, which can be a little bit difficult. You can also earn a one-hit kill if someone walks over your grenade that can be set up as a trap, but they do have to be close enough to get that full splash damage. It killed every super that we tested in two direct hits, even at 100 resilience. The grenades work a little bit differently depending on how you fire them. If you click them one at a time and release after each click, you can set them up as traps. This allows you to switch weapons and have them stay active on surfaces. On the other hand, if you use the full auto mode and keep the trigger held down while firing multiple grenades, each of them will explode as soon as you let go of the trigger, or when you switch weapons. Theoretically, you can place the grenades as a trap and then wait for enemies to walk through them and then release the trigger. However, this requires a lot to go right for you. First of all, you need to be located in a part of the map with a really tight choke point. You also need to be sure that there's no way you can get flanked from behind unless you set them down one by one, because otherwise they'll just all blow up when you switch weapons. The catalyst also only grants reserve ammo, which doesn't really help you much in PvP. If you want to use a heavy grenade launcher in PvP, I would definitely recommend something like Play of the Game over the Prospector. I'm going to rank this one in the lowest tier, D tier. Tractor Cannon has two main exotic perks. The first is Repulsor Force. This weapon emits a powerful impulse that pushes enemies away, suppresses their abilities, and makes them more vulnerable to all incoming damage. This works in tandem with the scientific method. Damaging an opponent temporarily increases speed and handling. In late year 1 of Destiny 2, Tractor Cannon became one of the strongest heavy weapons in the game, and it's retained that spot as a top pick ever since. Although today perhaps it's more of a situational pick than the outright slayer it used to be due to the new heavy ammo economy. The suppression field actually has some pretty solid range. You can suppress an enemy from as far away as about 9 meters. Bouncing an enemy off the wall can also kill from about 8 meters. And you can kill an enemy with just the tractor cannon blast alone from about 7.5 meters. Which is okay, but not quite up to par with some of the other legendary shotguns. The scientific method perk also offers a very noticeable speed and weapon handling boost after damaging an opponent. The downside of tractor cannon in regular 6v6 PvP is that it only gives you 2 shots when pulled off the wall so you can't quite go on the same crazy kill sprees as you could before the heavy ammo was reworked. However, in trials or competitive survival, having a player ready to equip the tractor cannon to suppress an upcoming super can be a game-winning strategy. Even just suppressing an enemy so that they can't use their class ability, grenade, or melee can be enough to secure an easy kill. You can also take out multiple enemies with a single blast if they're caught by the impulse. I want to put tractor cannon in the top spot, S tier. Speaking of exotic shotguns, the next weapon for us to cover is the Legend of Acrius. It has two exotic perks. The first is Shock Blast. This weapon fires blasts of high damage arc energy that overpenetrates enemies. The other is Long March. Detects enemies on your radar from farther away. When Acrius was first introduced into the game back in vanilla D2, it was incredibly dominant in PvP. These days though, you'll almost never see one. One of the main reasons for this is the one hit kill distance. Acrius only gets a one hit kill somewhere around 7.5 meters, which is not even as good as some of the special weapon options like the Astral Horizon or Felwinter's Lie. The ability to overpenetrate targets is nice, and occasionally you'll get a collateral kill because of it, but that's not going to happen all that often. It also doesn't have the same utility as something like a tractor cannon being able to suppress supers. In PvP with Acrius, you pretty much either kill them or they kill you. 
The handling speed is painfully slow on Acreus as well. One part of the gun that's not talked about too often is the extended radar feature. This extends the radar detection from the normal 48 meter distance all the way up to about 80 meters, which is pretty crazy. The catch though is that this extended radar only seems to work when you have ammo for your Acreus. I'm going to put Acreus in the C tier. Next up is Darcy, everyone's favorite range finding tool for testing PvP weapons. It has two main exotic perks. The first is Personal Assistant. Aim at an enemy head to view its health and other critical information in the scope. The other is Target Acquired. When Personal Assistant is active, this weapon has better target acquisition and deals significantly more precision damage. Darcy has historically been one of my favorite weapons to run as a heavy option for PvP, but mostly just when I'm playing for fun. I wouldn't necessarily call it a strong pick for competitive play. The combination of Personal Assistant and Target Acquired doesn't do a whole lot for PvP, since you need to aim down sights and have your crosshair on target for a little bit in order to get that perk to proc. This can be tough to pull off unless your tracking aim is incredibly good. I think where this definitely comes into play a little bit more is when you're trying to take out enemy supers. If you're able to activate the Personal Assistant and then land a headshot, it will take out any super in the game with that additional damage buff. The exception here seems to be the invisible mode on Spectral Blades. When I tested it for this video, it seemed like you just couldn't get the Invis Hunter to be detected by the perk, and therefore it wouldn't proc the extra damage. Darcy deals 100 damage for body shots in PvP, so if you miss your headshot against normal guardians and land a body shot, it's still a pretty easy cleanup kill. The extra stability provided by the Catalyst is fairly noticeable and it's really helpful for hitting those consecutive body shots or taking out multiple enemies in a streak. One of the areas where it really shines in PvP is actually the ammo economy. Pulling Darcy off the wall in 6v6 control gives you 5 shots. I'm going to put Darcy in the B tier. Next up is the Wardcliffe Coil. It has two main exotic perks. The first is Mad Scientist. This weapon fires a volley of rockets. It also has Mechanized Autoloader. This weapon automatically reloads on ammo pickup. In PvP, the Autoloader perk doesn't do much for us since PvP ammo already loads into heavy weapons automatically on pickup, but the Mad Scientist perk fires off a storm of rockets that can easily wipe out an entire team. To make things even better, the Exotic Catalyst improves tracking on those rockets. Warcliffe Coil is one of my go-to options whenever I have the exotic slot available, especially for more competitive modes like Trials of Osiris or Survival. The only time I tend to not run this weapon is on the longer range maps, because sometimes the rocket tracking can be a problem. Even then, sometimes it will surprise you and snipe targets from some crazy distances. Overall, the Wardcliffe Coil is pretty consistent and reliable, but every once in a while you'll fire off a volley and just totally whiff. It's pretty weird sometimes. You can also do a funny trick where you animation cancel the rocket volley and just fire a single rocket. Jumping right after firing is one way to make this happen. If you do manage to land one lonely rocket, you might actually get a kill from it too. For the most part, I think Wardcliffe is a top pick and deserves a spot in the S tier. The Colony has two main exotic perks. The first is Insectoid Robot Grenades. This weapon's grenades are insectoid robots that chase targets and explode close to them. It also has Serve the Colony. Insectoid robot grenades quickly repopulate the magazine from reserves while the colony is unequipped. The colony was one of the most creative weapons introduced into early Destiny 2. The way the colony bugs travel on the ground to track targets has always amazed me. Sometimes they'll even climb up way high on walls to find a target. Each grenade that travels on the ground deals 140 damage, so it takes 2 hits to get a kill. Direct hits, on the other hand, deal 140 plus 69 damage, which will one-shot any normal health target. Against supers, it really starts to struggle though. It takes 3-4 to four tracking spiders to kill most roaming supers, and that's a problem because you only get 3 shots when you pull it off the wall in 6v6 PvP. The colony also has a major flaw. If your target is smart, they can jump up in the air and avoid all of the damage as long as they aren't close enough to a wall for the bugs to climb up and hit them. This is a pretty major downfall of the weapon against smarter players. I'm going to rank colony in the B tier, except for momentum control where it kills in one hit and it's definitely S tier. Worldline Zero's main exotic perk is Tesseract. Use while sprinting with full energy to launch a heavy blink attack. Before the nerf to Worldline skating, Worldline was one of my favorite exotics in PvP just to use for fun because you could launch yourself while activating roaming supers like Golden Gun and maintain your momentum. You can still kind of do a lame version of this, but it's not nearly the same as it used to be since you don't keep your momentum once your super is popped. Worldline's exotic catalyst makes the activation time while sprinting a little bit faster, which makes the heavy attack easier to pull off in PvP. I suppose the elephant in the room when it comes to swords is third person peeking in PvP. I'm personally not a fan of this technique and I don't think it belongs in a first person game. I wish Bungie would do something to fix it, like maybe only enabling the third person camera when you have ammo in your sword. It is in the game right now though and I guess it's worth talking about. 
However, I'm trying not to bias my tier list based on the ability to third person peek, because you could also do this with any other sword or with an emote. The heavy Tesseract attack also deals quite a bit of damage in PvP. It's able to take out any super that we tested. Light attacks will take out a normal health guardian in a single swing, but take two hits against most roaming supers, and the regular heavy attack can also take out a super. I'm going to put Worldline in the C tier. Sleeper Simulant's main exotic perk is Dornrushkin. Apologies in advance for probably butchering that pronunciation. This weapon's laser over-penetrates enemies and refracts off of hard surfaces. Once upon a time, Sleeper was the most feared weapon to come across in Gambit, used by nearly every invader and also used to counter invaders. These days, the pick rate in both PvP and PvE is pretty low. The charge time feels glacially slow compared to other linear fusion rifles, but you're rewarded with a one-hit kill body shot against Guardians if you can pull it off. The Exotic Catalyst also speeds up this charge time a little bit with accelerated coils, which makes it a little bit more reasonable. Even against supers, Sleeper is a one-hit kill to the body. The bounce effect is really cool, but in my experience it rarely gives you a kill in PvP. It seems that each refracted beam does 145 damage, so you need to hit at least two of them. Almost certainly not helpful, but still kind of interesting, we found that the Sleeper is one of the few weapons that absolutely wrecks Titan Bubbles. Three refracting shots inside was enough to take the bubble out. I hope Bungie does something with Sleeper to make it a little bit more interesting in the future, because I do think it's one of the cooler looking exotics. For now, I'm going to put Sleeper in the C tier. Whisper of the Worm's main exotic perk is White Nail. Higher base precision damage, rapidly landing three precision hits will refill the magazine. It's important to note that this magazine refill only pulls bolts from reserves, and that doesn't generate new bullets like it used to when the gun was first introduced. In PvP, this takes away a pretty big potential selling point of the weapon if you're an incredibly good sniper. Whisper is another one of my favorite exotics used just for fun in PvP, but it's not a weapon I'd typically take into more serious modes like Trials or Competitive Survival. Whisper has a base impact of 100, which means that it does a whopping 170 damage for just a body shot in PvP. Sometimes this can get you an easy cleanup kill on a slightly weakened enemy. The headshot damage is enormous and it will one-shot any roaming super in the game. The Exotic Catalyst grants the perk Whispered Breathing, which gives you additional precision damage and range while ADSing for a short time. The extra range here is nice for landing shots, but the precision damage is already overkill. One of the major downsides of Whisper is the handling set of only 35. The ADS speed is very slow if you're not using exotic armor like the Dragon Shadow or Ophidian Aspect, or mods like Enhanced Sniper Targeting. The perk Mulligan seems to proc infrequently, but every once in a while you'll get some bonus shots after missing, which is a nice bonus. Similar to Darcy, the ammo economy in PvP is pretty good. In 6v6 modes, you get 5 shots when pulling it off of a wall. As much fun as it is attempting to hit those white nail clips in PvP, I'm going to have to rank Whisper down in the B tier. 1000 Voices' main exotic perk is Ahamkara's Eye. Charging this weapon unleashes a giant continuous beam of death. This works in tandem with unforeseen repercussions. This weapon's beam superheats its target upon impact, causing delayed explosions. Oh boy, 1000 Voices has been one of my favorite exotics to use ever since it first came into the game during Forsaken. I actually did the glitch a while back where you could put a kill tracker on the weapon through the Bungie mobile app and I currently have over 1200 PvP kills with it. Drawing funny shapes on walls or over control points and watching it explode and fire is about as fun as it gets. It's definitely a personal favorite of mine. It also works surprisingly well against roaming supers. I've killed countless Dawnblades and Spectral Blades by tagging them while they're running towards me. The obvious drawback here is the charge time. This can often get you killed, especially against good players who aren't afraid to push you. But when used intelligently, especially in modes like Control where enemies tend to group up, this thing can be devastating. I think the charge time slightly knocks it out of S tier potential, so I'm going to put it in the A tier. Two-Tailed Fox has two main exotic perks. The first is Twin Tails. Shoots two rockets, one void and one solar, that can track onto the same target. The other one is Play With Your Prey. The void rocket suppresses enemies, the solar rocket causes damage over time. Okay, before we cover how this weapon works, there's a crucial detail about Two-Tailed Fox that needs to be addressed. How cute is the little fox when he gets angry after targeting an enemy? This instantly made me love the design of this weapon. It also works with the Jade Rabbit version of the ornament. This rocket launcher simultaneously fires two rockets on trigger pull. The Void Rocket has a reasonably good suppression effect, so even if the blast doesn't somehow kill the target, at least they'll be suppressed for an easy cleanup kill. This works pretty well against roaming supers too. 
The solar burn effect doesn't seem to be all that impactful in PvP because most of the time, if you get a hit, you're going to just kill them anyway, but every once in a while, it does seem to clean up a kill that just barely survives the blast. My main issue with this rocket is the slow velocity. Once you fire the two rockets, it feels like it takes forever for them to track and reach the target. Hunters can even dodge to escape the tracking if they're quick enough. I'm going to put Two-Tailed Vox in the B tier. Black Talon's main exotic perk is Crow's Wings. Fire a heavy projectile attack. Heavy attacks are stronger with full energy. Attacks partially bypass elemental shields. Black Talon is incredibly fun to use in PvP. The sword projectiles feel like having a pocket dawn blade. Their tracking is pretty good and very lethal. The projectiles will one-shot any roaming super and have some impressive range if your aim is good. Also, the double attack is pretty strong for taking out multiple enemies. Similar to World Line Zero, I'm trying my best to not let the ability to third person peek with this weapon impact my decision on the tier list ranking. It's something I wish wasn't in the game and I don't want to encourage it. The good thing though for Black Talon is that it's a great PvP weapon even without the 3 peek ability. I'm going to put this one in the S tier. The Queenbreaker's main exotic perk is Wire Rifle. Fires a long range precision arc bolt that blinds enemies on hit. Queenbreaker is one of the only exotics that has options to choose in a perk tree. You have the choice between Marksman Sights, which are long range sights with a slower charge time and greater damage, as well as Combat Sights, low zoom sights with a faster charge and handling. You also have the choice between Hipfire Grip and Quick Draw. My preferred setup most of the time in PvP is to use the shorter range Combat Sights with Quick Draw. Aim Assist on the Queenbreaker feels incredibly generous. It's not uncommon to be aiming essentially at the center of the chest and be given a headshot. However, with the faster charging combat sights, you'll need to hit most roaming supers twice for a kill. The marksman sight on the other hand seem to kill every roaming super with a single headshot, so if you're anticipating a few supers coming your way, it may be worth swapping sights. I'm going to put Queenbreaker in the B tier. Thunderlord's main exotic perk is Rain Havoc. Kills with this weapon generate lightning strikes from above. It also has lightning rounds. This weapon fires faster and more accurately the longer the trigger is held. Continuous damage generates lightning strikes. Thunderlord is a great PvP machine gun. The base performance feels really good and it has an optimal time to kill of 0.53 seconds, which is right in line with most of the other machine guns. It also has pretty good range, damage drop off doesn't start until about 41 meters. Stability, at least on mouse and keyboard, feel pretty good too. The chain lightning effect from Rain Havoc is really cool and occasionally you'll benefit from it in PvP if enemies are close enough together. However, it seems to only do 65 damage per hit, so you'll still need to land a few extra bolts for the multi-kill. One thing that holds Thunderlord back a little bit in my eyes is actually not a problem with the gun itself, but instead a weird quirk with legendary machine guns where you can apply a backup mag mod to get extra ammo from the wall. For example, in 6v6 control, Thunderlord gets 25 shots, while Hammerhead, which is another 450 RPM archetype, gets 24 shots normally, but with backup mag, gets 29 shots. I've never understood why this works in PvP. It doesn't make sense to me that you get extra ammo just from the mod. But the end result is that it's a little bit harder to pick Thunderlord over something like Hammerhead. The other thing is that most exotic heavies have the ability to kill in one shot, and since Thunderlord's a machine gun, it does lack that capacity. It's still a great pick though, and I think it belongs in the A tier. Anarchy's main exotic perk is Arc Traps. Grenades stick to surfaces and chain arc bolts to other mines. Anarchy is probably the strangest PvP weapon on this list. It's an incredible weapon in PvE, but in PvP it's not typically viewed as a very popular pick. You can either stick enemies directly with the grenades, or you can draw an electric fence pattern on the ground, or a combination of both. Grenades deal 35 damage per tick when stuck directly, plus 9 damage for the stick. If you stick an enemy directly, it's a guaranteed kill, even against a roaming super. Ground damage between the grenades ticks for 135, so it only takes 2 hits to kill. And if you can somehow get enemies stuck in your fence of death, you might get a few kills. You get 6 grenade ammo when you're picking up anarchy off the wall in 6v6 modes, so theoretically you can pick up a decent amount of kills. On paper, this sounds pretty great, but in practice it's much harder to achieve, especially against smarter opponents. As fun as it is to make patterns of death on the ground, I think there are a lot more effective weapons to choose for your heavy slot. Overall, I'm going to say Anarchy is not a great choice for PvP, and I'm going to put it in the D tier, but I'd love for you to prove me wrong. Send me a tweet with your best Anarchy montage. Truth's exotic perk is Prototype True Seeker. This weapon's rockets have tracking, lock onto targets when aiming down sights. It also has grenades and horseshoes. 
Projectiles will detonate when they are within close proximity of their targets. Truth was an absolute S tier pick in Destiny 1, but with its reintroduction in Destiny 2, I feel like it hasn't quite achieved the same level of status, despite being a pretty good pick in PvP. The tracking on this works fairly well, and you can do some fun tricks with Truth to bend the rockets around cover. The grenades and horseshoe perk also makes it a good option for using it like a traditional rocket launcher, since all you need to do is hit close to your target to secure the kill. The main downside is its performance against supers. Truth requires two rockets against most roaming supers, which is a big problem since you'll get one rocket in most modes. I'm going to put Truth in the A tier. It's a great option, but I think it's slightly outclassed by other rocket launchers. Speaking of other rocket launchers, next up is one of my personal favorites, the Deathbringer. Deathbringer's main exotic perk is Dark Deliverance. Fires remotely detonated projectiles that drop void orbs on enemies. Hold to fire, release to detonate. This works in tandem with Dark Descent. The further a void orb falls, the more powerful its detonation becomes. As I mentioned a second ago, Deathbringer has quickly become my top pick for favorite PvP exotic heavy. Watching the mini Nova Bombs chase enemies to get 2-3 kills is just so funny to me. It's also nearly set up a few 7th columns for me because of the pacing. You can shoot it and then reposition while it's tracking its targets and go for more kills while the void projectiles are also seeking their own targets. I've also found that when you have the timing down, you can shoot it and then hold the trigger while you duck behind cover, then release the trigger at the perfect time and get kills while you're behind total safety. It's incredibly satisfying to use. I'd guess that Deathbringer has to be up there for the most kills per heavy pickup of any weapon that I've used since they changed how much heavy you get quite a few months ago. It seems like the Void Orbs will consistently find 2-3 kills if you can correctly guess the spawn locations. Against normal Guardians, just one Void Orb is enough for a kill. It performs really well against supers too. In a panic situation, you can fire it at the wall or nearby ceiling and then the orbs will give you a trade kill at the worst. I think Deathbringer deserves a top spot in the S tier. Although I'll admit I'm a little bit biased because of how much I love it. I could see an argument for dropping it down to A tier because it doesn't instantly delete people like Wardcliff does. Xenophage's main exotic perk is Pyrotoxin Rounds, fires high-powered explosive ammunition. Xeno is a really interesting PvP machine gun that fires explosive damage rounds that can't crit. They deal 150 damage per body shot, so if an enemy is slightly weakened, there's a good chance you'll take them out just with a single body shot blast. Otherwise, it's a guaranteed kill with just two hits, and you don't even have to hit a headshot. Weapons of Light actually buffs that damage into the 200 range, so if you happen to be a Bubble Titan protecting the heavy for your team, it can be a lot of fun one-shotting enemies. Against supers, Xeno will take out any roaming super with two body shots. The explosive damage is also pretty powerful. You can actually take out multiple enemies with just two shots if they're close enough together. I'm going to put Xenophage in the A tier. Leviathan's Breath has an exotic perk, Big Game Hunter. Fires a massive heavy bolt that staggers unshielded enemy combatants. It also has Leviathan's Psy. When fully drawn, the bolt creates a large concussive blast that knocks enemies back. Leviathan's Breath is our first heavy bow in the exotic slot. In PvP, it will kill any normal health guardian as well as kill any roaming super with a single arrow. The knockback effect can also occasionally land you some kills when you shoot near an enemy because of the blast. It's pretty fun to do. The downside of course is the massive draw time. It takes forever for an arrow to be ready to fire, which can put you in a lot of potential danger. This alone is a pretty major drawback. For that reason, I'm going to put Leviathan's Breath in the B tier. And finally we have Air Apparent. The exotic perk is Heavy Slug Thrower, used to spin up. This weapon can be fired only when fully spun up. It also has Armor of the Colossus. While at full health, spinning up this weapon protects you with an arc shield. Air Apparent is a weird weapon to rank because it's incredibly situational depending on the weapons and abilities of the enemy team. Since you gain an arc shield while spinning up, you're somewhat difficult to kill if the enemy lacks any sources of arc damage. However, if they do have arc damage abilities, you're going to be in big trouble. Air Apparent is also unique because it lacks any aim down sight mechanic. You're always in hipfire mode, and the ADS function instead just starts spinning up the weapon, which is actually required to shoot it. Headshots with Air Apparent deal 33 damage, and body shots deal 28 damage while you're shooting at 900 RPM. So if you land your shots, the target's going to die really quickly. It's also not too bad against roaming supers. Overall, I'm going to rank Air Apparent in the B tier, mostly due to its spin up time before being able to fire. Although, if the enemy has a lot of sources of arc damage, I think that ranking might have to drop to the C or even D tier. So that wraps up our ranking of all the exotic weapons into a tier list. As I mentioned in the intro, links to the other videos in the series will be in the description, so be sure to check those out if you haven't seen them yet, and also leave a comment letting me know what you think of the list. 
be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss my next video. And also let me know what video you'd like to see me create next. These types of videos take a lot of time to put together, so if you did enjoy it, a thumbs up rating would be greatly appreciated. Also be sure to follow my Twitch channel if you'd like to see me capture this footage live. I stream many nights each week over at twitch.tv slash pattycakespc. And finally, I owe a big shout out to my Discord community for helping me do the testing for this video. If you'd like to join us, there's a link to check it out in the description. That's all for now, catch you guys next time.